Very pleased not to be joined here at Blogging the Boys by the one, the only, the dashing, the debonair, the only person who I know personally um, who I have watched, I think, dance to DDR on Twitch. I think that's what it was. <laughs> uh, from Pride of Detroit, it is Jeremy Reisman. Jeremy, thank you so much for uh, venturing across enemy lines here at Blogging the Boys. Uh, no no problem at all. I was a little worried when you said I was the only person you, you knew in person and you, uh, you had a pause there i was i was afraid you were living a very lonely life but uh yeah i well i, I don't know I, you in person i know you uh two-dimensionally you know you and i true. don't have that third you know what i mean yeah we'll we'll work on that um was it ddr or was it um it wasn't ddr it was some it, like new fangled yeah. version like i maybe maybe like the gen z years are like ddr listen to <laughs> right. grandpa you know <laughs> like, exactly i think that's yeah. what they are I, I, i've forgotten the name i think it's just just dance it's just dance Okay. Uh, yeah, does Lady yeah. Gaga own this? I mean, I no or does she receive royalties? I mean, you would imagine. That's a really good question. Yeah. That's the second time Jeremy's told me that I had a really good question um, <laughs> that, that he and I have been talking so far. Today's Wednesday for us. Happy hump day, uh, Jeremy. But I won't tell anybody the first reason you said that because it might dox you. And I don't, I don't want to do that. So, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, my very first question as we preview Sunday's Cowboys Lions game, and it sounds offensive and it's only kind of meant to be, um, but it is completely serious. Is there a little brother energy to the Lions and the Cowboys? Because from from this side of things, it kind of feels that way. I'm just again, I'm I'm curious that the whole reason you're here is to kind of offer us this perspective. Yeah, I mean, I'd be lying if there were if there wasn't a little bit, right? They haven't won in what is it, twelve years against the Cowboys, and so there's definitely a feeling, especially with how the last one went, that like we got to win this one. Um, but you know, every time Dan Campbell's been asked about it, he's like, "But I want to reiterate, this is just the next one, right? This is this is he's trying to downplay it a little bit, but you know, behind the scenes, he's like, I I've never seen Dan Campbell as mad as he was after the last Cowboys game, mm -hmm. and so I know there's. And I don't know if it, it's it's a little brother energy against Dallas or if he's mad at the refs or, or whatever it is. But this one definitely means a little bit more to the Lions. And, and you can you can frame that however you want in terms of um, narrative. But yeah, I think I think this one does mean a lot. The Lions, you know, they just got done vanquishing a Seahawks team they hadn't beaten over a decade. Mm -hmm. And so um, I feel like this is kind of just next in line of, of knocking down those ghouls that have haunted this franchise for for obviously more than just a, a decade when it comes to general things, but with the Cowboys in particular, yeah, they've had the best of them for the last whatever matchups. Uh, ghouls, very topical with it being October. Um, do spooky. you have your Halloween costume picked out? I don't. I, no. I you, you know what? I've, I've kind of reached that age where I'm just like, it's a little too much effort for me, but... I've reached the point where my son is going to be an astronaut, so mm. it's just like, what is the most economical way i can support that you know like right can i like can i just like put on like a black sweater and like print out like a yellow circle and be like the sun you know what be i mean the sun. Like exactly <laughs> so, yeah um i think like but, a mars rover would be a little too complicated exactly exactly um <laughs> you know it makes sense that dan campbell would be pissed off the way that game ended out like dan campbell had complete and total control about the way the lions lost the game so you know way to completely and totally def you know deflect accountability dan campbell um That's right. this is um uh, a great friend of ours at Blogging the Boys, great friend of mine, Dave Hellman from Fox Sports, uh, had a tweet on Tuesday night and Tuesday afternoon and, and pointed out that this isn't really a rivalry. I wouldn't classify it that. That's not a big brother point. Um, but there are – the Dave used a vernacular. He said there's some goofy S that, that happens yeah. between these two teams. And um, that's a great way to put it. I mean, my memories of these games are that they are very, very, very strange. And that goes back to – like even like in high school, I remember Jason Witten set the record for like most catches in a game for the Cowboys against the Lions. John Kitna is this weird common denominator between the team. Uh, <laughs> there was, a, a, of course, the 2014 playoff game, the 2011 game in which um, people accused Tony Romo of throwing his buddy Bobby Carpenter uh, an interception because he'd been at his wedding. Um, right. th there's the Matthew Stafford Highland Park element to it all. Um there, you know, even the 2019 game between this team went down to the wire, um, yeah. last second field goal. And so then you've got obviously last year and what happened. So again, I like, I would definitely put a lot of their teams in the rivals box, but this is, it is kind of a, a, a family member that you dislike that you have to see at holidays. Yeah, no question. And I would say, you know, given the, the Lions history, I think most Lions fans consider this a little bit of a rival. I know. Dallas has a lot of enemies as, as a team that always has a target on their back. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just think this, I, I also think like the Lions are trying to come for the America's team title. I'm sure you've noticed this a little bit and 
I know because I'm friends with you, so I do. Right. I, know this, this. <laughs> I do admit that's that's very silly. Like the Lions are obviously a pretty darn likable team, right? Uh, everyone seems to like Dan Campbell now. He's on Applebee's ads, and um, you know it, it, it's fun seeing. I think for for everyone in general, you, you root for underdogs, and so seeing a team with 70 years of futility kind of turn things around in a way that seems wholesome, in a way that seems neat and and in some ways unique um is it it, it's endearing um whether it has long-term stability in terms of you know being extremely popular we'll we'll wait and see on that uh but yeah in terms of facing the cowboys i know lions fans you know they're they're maybe a step behind the packers and no one else um so this is this is a rivalry game for for lions fans again i do think the lions themselves are trying to downplay it a little bit as just hey this is an nfc team against an nfc competitor uh that that you know is expected to make the playoffs still, I think. So they're, they're trying to treat it like every other week, but I know Lions fans think this one is, it's certainly one that they've had circled uh, since the schedule came out. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense for obvious reasons and it's America's game of the week. I know that y'all are new to that. You know what I mean? Like the number one Fox <laughs> yeah. crew and things like that, <laughs> but you know, it's kind of par for the course around here. Um, <laughs> I will, I will warn you, this is um, an afternoon kick and it's, yeah. um, it's fall. So you've got the glare at AT AT&T Stadium. It's going to be a factor. You know what I mean? Like this is Mm -hmm. that time of year. So you got to watch out for that. Um, It is fun and it is interesting. And I obviously have paid a lot of attention to what you've done just because you and the rest of the team at Pride of Detroit do such a great job. But my my kind of general question to get the the pulse of the Lions uh, independent of the Cowboys side of things is, has this season lived up to expectations so far? Has it been too frustrating? Did the Bucks loss undermine some of that? Because I know when the season began, you all you know had your Super Bowl previews, and man, it is like y'all must need new like belts and pants. There's no way you can accommodate all the Kool Aid chugging that's been going. Everybody's Super Bowl prediction for anyone who's unaware didn't check out Brad Detroit Lions over Chiefs. Uh, like I think five of the six people or whatever had the Lions in the Super Bowl, and maybe four of those five had them winning it. I know I've got those numbers wrong, but you get the point. Yeah, and I think part of that was just we saw how far the team went last year, and I think on paper this team is significantly better i don't i don't think there's any way you can look at the roster and think it's worse than it was last year now as far as how the first four games have played out yeah it was a slow start i think the the one and one start had some people worried that maybe we were overhyping this team a little bit um the offense in particular didn't look like itself which was probably the most surprising development because that's been good for two and a half years now and so that was kind of the thing that everyone was banking on um that the part that we were still uncertain about was was the defense and the defense has come out and be been better I wouldn't say it's necessarily good or great at this point, but um, the, the good news for Lions fans and, you know, it always helps vibes when you go into the bye week with a big win, especially over mm-hmm. a Seahawks team that was undefeated. As Like I said, they hadn't beaten the Seahawks in over a decade, um, but the offense came alive there in that game. And that was the offense that that we'd been waiting to see for really all three weeks before that. You know, they, they put up 20 on, on <clears throat> Arizona in the first half and then they went scoreless in the in the second half. So. That was their first full game. They hang 42 on a Seahawks defense that had been outstanding through the first three weeks of the season. They they obviously weren't great this past week either, but um, 42 on, on a Mike McDonald defense was a big step in the right, right direction and, and a big step into delivering, I think, the the promise of what this offense is, is supposed to be going forward. So I would say generally it, it's been a little bit of a slower start than expected, but Overall, you look at that and you say, "Okay, you're three and one with a start that you don't you don't think is very good for the the talent level of where they are." You'll live with that. That's pretty darn good. And obviously, I think you know Minnesota's hot start has has also brought a little mm-hmm. bit of the excitement down because they look pretty darn good so far. But in general, I would say most Lions fans think the Lions are where they should be through through four games. And uh, I think I think this next game is is going to be a, a test to whether those good vibes continue or if if we start to question again where uh, this team actually is as opposed to expectations yeah I do think this is an interesting game for both teams in in that it's uh, okay who are you really um, can you be the Lions can you go be the big brother can can you go you know cut the head off of the king so to speak and for the Cowboys obviously everybody stayed up to like five in the morning watching Sunday Night Football Um, and that final drive was impressive in the sense of Dak Prescott saying, okay, I'm just not going to allow this whole mess to, you know, send us into this utter total chaos. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious if he can drag this lifeless team, you know, through, you mentioned an impressive win before the bye Dallas is on their bye next week. If they were to get to four and two beating the lions and, and kind of keeping little brother in check, whatever um, it, it would, I think really elevate spirits, obviously, as we cruise through October. Um, 
the, the Jared Goff performance on the Monday Night Football game that you brought up, the 18 for 18, was like all over the place. There was a, a stat, and uh, Jeremy was the person who gaslit me into getting NFL Pro, uh, for anybody who's <laughs> unaware. Um, but there was this incredible stat about – oh, so here it is. Um, so shout out to them. Jared Goff has attempted a deep pass, which is classified, for anyone who's unaware, as 20 or more air yards on just 5.6% of his total attempts this season, the third lowest rate in the NFL. Dallas is actually one of the better teams at defending the deep pass, uh, weirdly enough. But – the whole reason behind this is that the Lions run game has been amazing. And that's honestly, yep. I know that the golf stuff gets talked about a lot for obvious reasons. And obviously the golf and Dak connection continues to deliver weirdly enough, but the Lions run game seems like the foundation that all this is built on. And that's what I'm most nervous about relative to this specific game. Yeah. I mean, you look at some of the advanced stats on the Cowboys side, it doesn't look great in terms of the run defense, whether it's, I think they're 31st ranked DVOA or 32nd, I think in EPA. Um, so that certainly seems like the, the plan of attack this week versus the, the, the Cowboys on, on the line side. And, you know, I think the passing game is, is an extension of that. You know, when, when they're at their best, Jared Goff is, is running a ton of play action, um, which, you know, as, as statistics say, you don't necessarily have to be good at running the ball um, to be good at, at play action. But I do think it helps in this case because the lines are such an aggressive team when it comes to the run game. And are you an established just, the runner? Is that, are you one of these people? I didn't, I, I never didn't... thought I would be RJ. Like wow. Dan Campbell has, has You're changed too my mind on a lot of things. I know, I know. Oh I am. my God. <laughs> Arif gets on me for this too. So, uh, wow. But I, I, like it, you can't they, cite DVOA in half a breath and then the other side be like, well, you have to establish the run in order to, you know, elevate. <laughs> play time, action. Like, what, what has been the whole discourse about NFL defenses this year? I mean, two high safeties. And, right. Yeah. I mean, and how do you beat that you, with, with the run game? You I do. I think that both sides of this can be true. Like, I think yeah. that that you can. If you're elite at running the ball, if you have an elite offensive line, and I would put Detroit sure. in, in this box, then yes. then your play action is a greater threat than average. But the Correct. the like general premise of play act, and I always cite there was this Chris Collinsworth clip I, I clipped several years back, uh, and his qu exact quote was, "Play action is effective regardless of how you're running the football." So right. it is effective, but the varying degrees yeah. of effectiveness range, obviously. Right. Yeah, I think we agree then. Yeah, that wasn't and what so you said. I'm. I. I helped you. You the clarified horse gets what water, I said. And that's. That's all I'm. I'm <clears throat> trying to say. Yeah, and so listen. That's. That's what they like to do. Attack the middle of the field. That's no surprise. That, of, of. Of that's kind of Jared Goff's thing. And so that was very much the game plan against the Seahawks. You know. Um. Mm -hmm. And and it worked. I think to to perfection. I think for some reason they had kind of gotten away of of play action early in the season. Um. The 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 strangest thing really early in the season was Jared Goff's ineffectiveness from a clean pocket. He is usually lethal during those situations, you know, top five in, in CPOE and, and DVOE, EPA, whatever stat you want to use. That's where he was excellent at. And through the first two games, I think he was bottom five. Mm -hmm. That has changed. That has kind of flipped on its head, kind of regressed back to what we've expected out of him. And yeah, against, against the Cowboys, he'll, he'll throw the ball, but I think, I think you're right. I think they're going to be looking at, at, an opportunity to run the ball, especially with the beat up defensive line of the Cowboys. And, um, you know, we, the, the interesting thing about this team is, is they aren't afraid to flip their strategy. No, no matter what, um, against the Buccaneers, which obviously didn't work. Their plan was to throw to open up the run. Uh, they threw it 55 times and had they been better than one for seven in the red zone, they probably win that game too. So, um, you know, I, I think they're a vers versatile enough team to do, to do both. But in this particular matchup, I think it makes more sense to to establish the run. Yeah, and the Cowboys have played two games in their building so far this season, and in both instances, the you know starting running back, however you want to call it, for the other team went off. It was Alvin Kamara and then Derrick Henry. Dallas, I don't know if you know this, um, hasn't won a home game since the game in question. <laughs> that, right. That, right. That, that that. And by the way, I did want to. I forgot to mention this. Then I think that that flap of the butterfly wings um worked out for detroit because that, sure. that was the difference between the two and the three seed obviously and i don't mean to hindsight things and i don't mean to you know um squash or, or squish the the playoff run that detroit went on last year but i think the benefit of hindsight offers us the the if you had the choice i think i would have rather dallas gone through the rams and, and potentially the buccaneers than sure. jordan love and the packers so just an interesting you know well you know kind of worked out yeah. in the end um that being said um yeah, Dallas has been gashed severely. They did 
you know, interestingly respond really well to this. I don't know how – yeah. obviously you and, and your team do such a great job of studying the opponent. Allowed 26 rushing yards on 24 carries from the New York Giants. The Thursday after, they got destroyed by the Baltimore Ravens and obviously limited a really, you know, inept Steelers offense this past week on Southern Night Football. So this is a, a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde Cowboys team. And and what I what I worry about is they are not great at getting punched in the mouth. And, and that's a really – vague way to put this but pettiness gets put in this bad box but i think it is a, a superpower in a lot of ways and sure. the lions seem to be like the pettiest team in the world to me <laughs> um and i mean that in a very complimentary yeah. way and and yeah. so i i could see there's a f- very very fine line in not making the game too big um, and as an example, we're actually a year removed from Dallas getting the doors blown off of them in San Francisco on Sunday Night Football last year. And they mm-hmm. had talked that game up because of all the playoff losses to San Francisco and said this is a measuring stick game. And then they go and just get waxed. And so I think early in the week, Detroit's doing a great job of compartmentalizing this. But I could totally see uh, Dan Campbell, you know, Dan Skipper. We got to have this moment. Like, it, like, right. am I is my read on that wrong? Like that that Detroit would be that intentional about kind of rubbing <laughs> people's noses in this. I, it's, it's tough to say because at this point it wouldn't even be a surprise, right? Like Dan That's Campbell's true. already been asked. Dan Campbell's already been asked this this week. You know, first play of the game, are you going tackle eligible? Right. And he's like, ah, we haven't even gotten into anything yet. And it's just like everyone is expecting some sort of thing. And so, to me, I think it's just it's too obvious and and too blatant. Um. So I, I mean, I don't know. I I do kind of feel like once they get into the game, it's just a game. Um. But it's it's never but, just a game between these teams. There's, I, ne- I there's never just a game. It's too it's too weird. It's too awkward. There's too many. It weird is too weird. Yes. Variables and that, factors. That, I just think I think Dan's good at motivating the troops, and I th- I think he's generally good about keeping a level head about him too. Because like I said, that that Cowboys game was maybe the angriest we've ever seen it, and that's because he doesn't get angry on the sidelines. He is one of the most calm, cool, and collective, which I think goes against maybe some of this national perspective of who he is. You know, he's a meathead. He's right. He's throwing his fist around and things like that when when that's the complete opposite of, of what we normally see and you know early when the lines are losing people are like why isn't he more animated on the sidelines you know where obviously that doesn't really matter but i i, I tend to think the lines are eventually you know once the the narratives are out of the way once the quite they stop being asked questions about everything about dan skipper and, and all mm-hmm. that junk like I, th- I think he's just gonna treat it like a normal football game and and i think you're gonna see that on the field too I'm very interested to see how Amonra St. Brown kind of fares in this game. And Mm -hmm. I don't think that it has to be a big Amonra game, but um, you were actually the person who sent me or put it on my radar, the the clip of him talking about Jordan Lewis over the offseason. And that created, I wouldn't call it beef. Now, Jordan Lewis is a native Michigan, Michigan, right. Mich- Mich- he's a Michigan literal Andrew. Michigan man, uh, yeah. just like you are. <laughs> and so, uh, and Jordan Lewis is coming off of a week where he lived in George Pickens's head. I don't know if you've seen any of this, but, um, <laughs> but like Jordan Lewis is a, an elite troll. And so mm-hmm. I, I mean, if, if that pettiness kind of spills out into one, if I had to pick a poster for the pettiness on the lines, it's a mandra. And so yeah. I do, I yeah. do. I, th- I think if if I came back in time and told you one lion lost their cool and that led to the lions losing their game, I I do think it could be a Monra pressing. I don't know if you agree with that. I I think that's probably accurate. He's definitely a, a, an emotion filled guy. We don't necessarily see it a ton on the field, at least. And he's he's actually not that much of a trash talker on the field, from what I understand. Um, but like he'll let you know when he beats you, I guess. So there's, there's, there's a little bit of that. I think, I think he doesn't respond to trash talk much. Like I think, I think he's kind of dialed in a little bit, but given, yeah, given everything that's happened in the off season, given that I think I'm on rise is, is, is actually coming out of his shell a little bit in terms of not just keeping, you know, all these vendettas in his notebook, like actually talking <laughs> about it a little bit. Um, I, I, I do think, I do think that's, that's probably an accurate read. Maybe, maybe Jameson Williams is another one who has mm. not, shied away in his like celebrations i would say haven't seen a lot of frustration out of him but he is a guy that definitely plays with a lot of emotion and so jordan lewis can get into his head a little bit i wouldn't be surprised to maybe have a little bit of flair back there but like i said it's mostly been positive from jmo but he strikes me as a guy who who plays with a lot of emotion and, and could be toyed with a little bit there i know it was a 
hectic moment when the Lions beat the Rams last year in the playoffs. But I do recall Aiden Hutchinson telling Melissa Stark right after the game, you know, getting told, hey, you get to host the Buccaneers, whatever, uh, him saying, we really wanted a trip to Dallas. So, like, I, I think yeah. that, I oh, mean, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm very, very interested in all this. And so that being said, um, it, there's a lot of bravado. There's a lot of confidence. And again, that's completely and totally fine and fair. I have no qualms with that. If you are hesitant or scared or nervous about one element, two elements of this Cowboys team, because I'll be honest with you, from this side of things, like we we hate this team. Like like no, nobody hates this team more than we do. Uh, so um, what, what is the thing that you're like, dude, I'm I'm losing a little bit of sleep this week because you have X or Y. Yeah, I, I will say in general, I do think that the matchup based on, you know, just the first month of the season does favor the Lions and almost heavily, in my opinion. They're but three the point one thing, road favorites. I mean, of course right. it does. Yeah, uh, but the one thing that that would definitely keep me up to, at night is is the pass offense. I think it's the one thing that they've been pretty consistently good at. Um, I know, I know, Dak Prescott has not been consistently good to a lot of people, um, but to, he's he's a guy that can make plays. C.D. Lamb is a guy who put up 200 yards in this past matchup, and the Lions still have not shown a an ability to shut down a number one receiver. I, I do think their corners are much better than they were in the previous matchup in Carlton Davis and Taron Arnold, but those two have also combined for a heck of a lot of flags. And so I'm almost guaranteeing at this point, a 50 yard penalty because it just seems to happen every single week with this team. And it's frustrating as heck, especially as someone who believes that it should be a 15 yard penalty max, but hmm. aside, um, I think the lines, if you include defensive holding and pass interference have been called for 12 penalties so far through four games. So three per game. Uh, they're in the right position to make plays. They just have not been making a play on the ball. And instead of been playing the man, I'd argue that some of those calls have been ticky tacky, but that's what it is. And I'm going to go ahead and play this card games being played in Dallas. Oh my gosh. I, I'm sorry. Like I have to, like the, the, I, I think something is going to happen where I'm going to be frustrated about. And I know, I know your fans are not going to like that answer at all, but I think that's I don't know. A, it's definitely a perception of, of what happens, at least from the Lions side. In it's, it's an embarrassing thing to say in general, but it's more embarrassing to bake it in before the game because it sounds it sounds like a ready made <laughs> excuse. Um, yep. So, yep. I mean, although I mean, I understand I, I'm I never find blaming officials to be justifiable. Like, I I mean, we I, all I'm have to move. There, to be clear. We, we all have to move on. That being said, Des <laughs> caught it. Um, but I mean, you know, it's like the idea. <laughs> People love to be like, oh, well, the NFL has it. Roger Goodell has it out for the Cowboys. Do you have any idea how much Roger Goodell would love for the Cowboys to be in the Super Bowl? Do you have any idea how much money right. oh, everybody 100%. would make off of this? I don't, like, <laughs> I don't think there's a conspiracy. I just think two of the worst ref jobs that, that have uh, happened to Detroit came in that stadium. Mm, maybe don't put yourself in a position to, you know, have I, a game lost. I agree. I, mean, I agree with you. I agree um, with you. So um, if – Something I like to, to ask, and, and nobody knows the Lions better than you. Um, no disrespect to the Lions podcast that called itself reporting eligible, which is again a little brother move. Um, I don't know who runs that podcast. I'm sure they're great at their job, but <laughs> I thought fans, they're reporters. I but I thought that name was crazy. <laughs> like that if I mean again, just caught it. So, it, it was smart. I, I understand it. But that being said, <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that there's a pun involved. That's cool. Yeah. Um okay, whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> Something I like to ask people who do what you're doing here is yeah. what would impress you if the Cowboys do win or even if they don't, but whatever, if for you to walk away and be like, holy crap, like this happened, like that really, you know, they took advantage of this or they exploited this or they didn't fall for this. What is, what are maybe one or two of those things? Um, You know, if Dallas can stop the Lions run game, I don't, I don't know how they're going to, they're going to do it. But if, if, if they can, again, with that beat up defensive line, if it's without Micah Parsons, um, not that he's the b best run defender, but he's he's decent at it for sure. Um, if they can if they can even slow the lines in that department, I think that that would go a long way to changing kind of my narrative of of what that team is right now. Um, and run the ball to be to be quite honest. Like I know they're they're looking for an identity there, and um, you know toying between running backs at this point. Um, but the lines have been outstanding at, at defending the run between the tackles. Um, they're a little bit vulnerable on the edges, so I wouldn't be surprised to see. Dallas pull out some, you know, end arounds, things like that in this game. But if they can run, but I, mean, I guess that's it. Like if they can win the trenches on both sides of the mm. football, that would be a little bit shocking to me. But listen, one thing that Dan Campbell said literally today is that, you know, I know they're missing a lot, a lot of guys on the defensive front, but they have outworked everyone in the past two weeks. And so if they can kind of continue that trend of just beating up other teams in the trenches with guys that, that are coming off the bench, um, especially against a, a team like Detroit, which I think is pretty darn good on both sides of the the trenches. Um, 
that would that would change my mind a lot about that team. Yeah, I, I think that that's really fair. I mean, obviously, the Lions are regarded as one of maybe the best team in the trenches on both sides of the ball. Um, so, I mean, tall test. And you, I love the way you put it. I mean, getting a win, going to the bye. But this this is that exacerbated a little bit in that you get to smush this team who's coming yeah. off their bye. Um, yeah. the, the Lions, who the NFL favors so much, they don't have to play a game after their Monday night football game. Um, they get the bye. So, interesting. You know, I haven't heard. Is that a benefit? That, that cuts it into is their a benefit. bye week. They have that's a what less, I'm saying. Like, like. When most teams have to play a game after Monday Night Football, so they get a short week. The Lions didn't because the NFL is catering to them. You know what I'm saying? So, sure. and they get the the buy before this game, such a massive game, a potential playoff <laughs> seeding game. I mean, like the NFL is holding your hand, and it's okay to admit that. Sure, uh, sure. So, but for Dallas to to squash that would be just an all time vibes boost, I think. Um, and this yeah. is a team that really needs that. So, um, last thing, prediction. I mean, I know it's early in the week and whatnot, but generally speaking, I'm assuming you're taking the Lions. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'll, I'll have time to, to crunch the numbers a little bit more later in the week, but I just I do think that the, the trench battle is in the line's favor. And, and, you know, given the game of football, if you win that, I feel like you win it nine times out of 10. So assuming that the lines don't have a cavalcade of errors and, and turnovers and things like this, I actually think they might win this kind of handily. I don't normally predict two score wins just because it doesn't happen in the NFL that often, mm-hmm. but I'm kind of looking at like a 30 20 type game right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm leaning that way. I'm picking the lines to be clear. I don't know to your exact point exactly how or why, or I definitely know why, but um, but I could see it being like 34-20, you know, and Dallas gets like a garbage time touchdown, makes it look a little bit closer or whatever, kind of like their Ravens loss. Um, yeah. I, I think the Cowboys getting that win in Pittsburgh was so valuable because they, they will probably lose this game and they'll fall to 500. But being 500 at the bye is a very different thing um, than, um, you know, being two and four. Also, um, Dallas gets to come out of their bye and face their big brother because they go to San Francisco uh, after that. So, you know, uh, uh, two ships passing on the night. Um, as we close, Jeremy, a uh, a movie recommendation, a show recommendation, maybe a video game recommendation, not just dance Ooh. and not Detroit either. I know a lot of people love that game, but it's too topical <laughs> for this. What is it? Beyond Detroit? Is that what it's called? It, I think um, it's just called Detroit. I'm pretty oh, sure. Okay. Um, wow, you man. don't even know anything about your city. It's embarrassing. Oh, I mean, listen, I don't know anything about the media's depiction of the city. <laughs> um, Have you ever seen 8 Mile? Uh, of course I saw <laughs> <laughs> And RoboCop. All right. Okay. Um, I, I, I haven't. The, the last time I went to the movie theater was the first time in a while. And I saw I saw Beetlejuice, too, which admittedly was just like dumb fun. I feel like I feel like most sequels. It's just like it's a lot of fan servicey moments where it's just like, hey, remember when we did that in the first one? This is kind of like that. <laughs> um where the, the plot was was lacking and, and but i don't know sometimes i want it just dumb fun and so if you're looking for dumb fun and you know of the original beetlejuice i mean it has michael keaton i don't i, I shouldn't need to sell it more than that so go see beetlejuice too um i haven't been to the movies since avengers endgame came out oh i know well, i mean it was on? well i mean it was um it was like April 2019 and then COVID, I mean, and yeah. then had a kid. And so, you know what I mean? Like all just kind of snowballed. And and then like in that time, it's just been easier to stay at home and watch. You know, right. like I haven't seen the new Deadpool Wolverine, but it's like I can wait the three months or whatever and yeah. just whatever. Um, but well, I won't do that. that movie is. I um my last thing is because I won't watch Beetlejuice. I asked a, a, a friend of mine this um, when the movie was coming out. We were getting like previews all over the place. What is Beetlejuice's like power? Like does does he have one? Like what what is what does he do? Like is he just show up like that? Like what like what's it, what is he offering? Of, it's kind of everything and nothing. Like he can turn into these big scary monster things. Does he use that? Does he harness this power for anything? Like does, a does little he... bit every now and then. He also just breaks into. Uh, he I would say he breaks into song, but also I think he just lip syncs songs. In, in a are, couple instances, I don't where know are the why. songs playing? Like, does he carry? Like, you know, <laughs> that's a great question. I don't know if like, is, he, like... is he is he breaking the fourth wall to lip sync these songs? Like, <laughs> maybe he he invented wireless speakers back in the nineties when the the movie first came out. Is, um, I mean, look, <laughs> teach their own. I, that was a poor choice, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. My my recommendation is um the new um NHL show on Prime. It's pretty good, so no. I would offer that. Yeah. Because okay. I don't think there's any Red Wings because, I mean, well, you know why, but you know, <laughs> they stink. But um, Go Tigers, they, though. They hey. hey, hey. Yeah, that's what I should have recommended. Go watch the ALDS. Well, it could be over. You're probably looking for a team. Yeah, the ALCS could be here by the time this, this game starts. And um, I don't know. <laughs> you, know you never know how that's going to go. Uh, Jamie Reisman, everybody check out on Twitter at Detroit on 
Lion. Very difficult for me to always remember. Um, and prideofdetroit.com, the podcast. I mean, you talk about reporting eligible. They're <laughs> reporters. The, nothing, nothing beats the podcast. You guys got way too lucky. The smartest and dumbest title we've ever come up with. Um, my actual last question, your favorite lion of all time, animated, real, or Detroit? <laughs> um, Barry Sanders is is the chalk answer. Do, mm. do you want me to go a little bit deeper? DeAndre, I'll go DeAndre Levy. DeAndre I was Levy gonna, was... I'm thinking like Simba. You know, that was my choice. Like I was leaning in that direction, you know. <clears throat> yeah, but... Way more. And listen, talk about, I love talk the Lion about King. Talk about sing and dance. I mean... True. I love The Lion King. My dog's name is literally Zazu from that movie, but... It's very not the not a lion though. True. That's interesting. That's why I didn't say it. I know, but it's ironic that you your whole life is the lions, and that you <laughs> would name your dog like like imagine like I'm like hey I, you know, I have a friend who covers the Detroit Lions. He named his dog after one of the greatest like animated li you know lion movies of all time. Oh, he named him Simba. Nah, when he went Scar. Nah, Nala. Is it a girl? Mm -mm. Went Zazu, the bird. So it's a it's a cooler name. I like Zazu. What what <laughs> dog's names do you know named Zazu? 